The Yankees had been struggling during their years under CBS ownership, which had acquired the team in 1965. In 1972, CBS chairman William S. Paley told team president e. Michael Burke the media company intended to sell the club. As Burke later told writer Roger Kahn, Paley offered to sell the franchise to Burke if he could find financial backing. Steinbrenner, who had participated in a failed attempt to buy the Cleveland Indians from Vernon Stuffer one year earlier and who had been an investor in Buffalo's failed 1969 Major League Baseball expansion bid, was brought together with Burke by veteran baseball executive Gabe Powell. On January 3, 1973, Steinbrenner and minority partner Burke led a group of investors, which included Nederlander, Lester Crown, John DeLorean, Nelson Bunker Hunt and Marvin L. Warner, in purchasing the Yankees from CBS for years. The selling price was reported to be $10 million. However, Steinbrenner later revealed that the deal included two parking garages that CBS had bought from the city, and soon after the deal closed, CBS bought back the garages for $1.2 million. The net cost to the group for the Yankees was therefore $8.8 .8 million. The announced intention was that Burke would continue to run the team as club president. But Burke later became angry when he found out that Paul had been brought in as a senior Yankee executive, reducing his authority, and quit the team presidency in April 1973. Burke remained a minority owner of the club into the following decade, but as fellow minority owner John McCullen stated, there is nothing in life quite so limited as being a limited partner of George Steinbrenner. Paul was officially named president of the club on April 19. It would be the first of many high-profile departures with employees who crossed paths with the boss. At the conclusion of the 1973 season, two more prominent names departed. Manager Ralph Houck, who resigned and took a similar position with the Detroit Tigers, and general manager Lee McPhail, who became president of the American League. The 73 offseason would continue to be controversial when Steinbrenner and Paul fought to hire former Oakland Athletics manager Dick Williams, who had resigned immediately after leading the team to its second straight World Series title. However, because Williams was still under contract to Oakland, the subsequent legal wrangling prevented the Yankees from hiring him. On the first anniversary of the team's ownership change, the Yankees hired former Pittsburgh Pirates manager Bill Verdon to lead the team on the field. Steinbrenner quickly became famous for his rapid turnover of management personnel. In his first 23 seasons, he changed managers 20 times. Billy Martin alone was fired and rehired five times. During his first 26 years with the club, he went through 13 publicity directors. The first time George fires you, it's very traumatic, oft fired Yankees flack Harvey Green said. The three or four times after that, it's like, great, I've got the rest of the day off. He also employed 11 general managers over 30 years. He was equally famous for pursuing high-priced free agents and then feuding with them. In July 1978, Billy Martin famously said of Steinbrenner and his $3 million outfielder Reggie Jackson, the two were meant for each other. One's a born liar, and the other's convicted. The comment resulted in Martin's first departure, though officially he resigned tearfully before Yankees president Al Rosen could carry out Steinbrenner's dictum to fire him. During the 1981 World Series, Steinbrenner provided a colorful backdrop to the Yankees' loss of the series. After a Game 3 loss in Los Angeles, Steinbrenner called a press conference in his hotel room, showing off his left hand in a cast and various other injuries that he claimed were earned in a fight with two Dodgers fans in the hotel elevator. Nobody came forward about the fight, leading to the belief that he had made up the story of the fight to light a fire under the Yankees. After the series, he issued a public apology to the city of New York for his team's performance, while at the same time assuring the fans that plans to put the team together for 1982 would begin immediately. 
He was criticized heartily by players and press alike for doing so, as most people felt losing in the World Series was not something requiring an apology.